Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, for our podcast, DwyerBoxingNews.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News, on iTunes, Dwyer Boxing News, one word. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, uh, Dwyer Sports Betting YouTube channel subscribers did well on the uh, Cowboy Detroit Lion game. The Lions covered that spread comfortably, right? In fact, the Lions were up big early, right? You were getting something like seven points by taking the Lions. So I'm not here screaming about spilled milk. I'm not. What I am here, though, to do is to talk about, really, the cover-up that's happening right now over one of the historically bad calls in NFL history, right? Now, I can tell you that I saw the play in real time. We're talking about the pass interference play. Understand that the former head of NFL officiating, Mike Pereira, was on the telecast, and he talked about in real time how it was pass interference right understand the issue has been clouded by people talking about face guarding being legal in the NFL not face guarding like this I encourage everyone to look at the replay right this is not just face guarding this is a guy sticking his hand out on the receiver Right? Let me point out the obvious, too. Did it affect the play? Absolutely. Because if this guy is not there, the receiver catches the ball. Quite frankly, Matt Stafford could have thrown that pass for just strategic purposes. Seeing a defender who's not in a position to make a play who would have to commit pass interference to break that play up. So the play is actually a very simple play as I see it. There's no complexity to it, right? Mike Pereira points out at the time that it's pass interference. The referee on the field points out at the time that it's pass interference. Let's talk about the significance of the flag getting picked up because that's what happened. This isn't a non-call. The call was made. You understand that. The call was made. This is a on-the-field informal call reversal without any justification for picking up the flag. The moment in the game was huge. If Detroit gets that call, they're in field goal range. If Detroit gets that call, they're continuing a long drive, a time consuming drive. If Detroit gets that call, they're more confident than ever in the game. Right? The Cowboys would be much more desperate, wouldn't they? Now what's been happening since then is that Cowboy fans, sensing that they got a gift, and we know this was gift wrapped, sensing that they got a gift, they're all now trying to say that, hey, look, the receiver grabbed the guy's face mask. There are countless other plays in that game that could have gone the other way, right? Games necessarily hinge on dozens of plays, not just one play. How can you discount the rest of the game and distill it to this one play? Well, it's because we know that if this play was properly called, then the rest of that fourth quarter would have been different. At a minimum, Detroit could have run another two minutes off the clock, could have then kicked a field goal. I'll agree, maybe the field goal hits, maybe it doesn't. Right? There is a missed field goal in this game by Dallas's kicker. Dallas wasn't on their game. But just understand, that's how big the moment was. 
right? The ball was on the Dallas side of the field. A pass interference would have given the Lions a new set of downs. Now, how gift wrap was this game? And I'm not here alleging a conspiracy theory involving the NFL. Keep in mind, no sour grapes by me. I won on my point spread play. That video is still up at The Wire Sports Betting here on YouTube. Right? I won on that play. But how gift wrap was this game? This game was so gift wrap that the NFL has said that on the Jason Witten fourth down play, Pro Bowler and Dominican Sue was held, and that call was missed by the referees. Understand, if that call is made, Dallas is backed up. If Dallas is backed up, they might not go for it on fourth down. Then you're dealing with even a bigger time element than you dealt with with the bad call, right? Which was, of course, high drama and stress. So the Cowboys have to realize that officiating played a big role, a huge role in their win. And understand, it's going to have consequences down the road in the playoffs because the Seattle Seahawks, had they been forced to face the Detroit Lions, would have been dealing with the number one ranked rushing defense in the league. Marshawn Lynch went about a month during the regular season where he wasn't doing diddly. You remember there was talk about Marshawn Lynch not even being back with the Seahawks next year. Right? Had Detroit gone to Seattle, I'm not saying Detroit beat Seattle, but it would have set up an interesting dynamic, wouldn't it have? If they were able to shut down Marshawn Lynch and Seattle would have had to have relied on a passing attack that doesn't feature A-plus receivers, right? Let's remember, Golden Tate wears a Lions jersey these days, not a Seahawk jersey, right? Russell Wilson is very good. Let's just say Russell Wilson doesn't have Calvin Johnson on his team or Golden Tate. That game would have been intriguing. Right? Instead, because of the Dallas win, Seattle now faces Carolina. Right? Now, you know, the Carolina game has its own intrigue, but let's just say it doesn't feature the level of defense that the Detroit Lions were bringing to the table. Right? These bad calls aren't just isolated to one game. They affect playoff seating don't they right so put me among those who quite frankly is scratching his head not only at the flag getting picked up but at the obvious attempt to cover up the mistake right Mike Pereira in real time before this became a controversy told you that he agreed with the pass interference call as it was made. Why would they announce the pass interference call? Right? Who's the person who said, no, pick up the flag? I didn't see it. What did they go by in picking up that flag? You know if they went to instant replay, the pass interference call was obvious on instant replay. So, of course, now I notice on Twitter... People are criticizing Jim Caldwell for not going for it on 4th and 1, etc., etc., right? Understand, he called the right play on 3rd down. That play should have resulted in a new set of downs in field goal range for the Detroit Lions. We all agree, at a minimum, the defender did face guarding, right? For those of you who want to know if it's a catchable ball... How could that not be a catchable ball? The only thing between the receiver and the ball is this Dallas Cowboy who has no idea where 
the ball is and who has his hand on the receiver's shoulder. Right, so we'll be talking about this game five years down the road, ten years down the road. Frankly, we'll be talking about this game until Detroit wins a Super Bowl, right? I'm sure Lions fans won't forget this game. I'm sure they know something was wrong with this game. Think about it, too. Forget the pass interference play. The NFL admits that it blew the Jason Witten play. Either play could have turned this game. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Let me know, too, your thoughts on the viability of this Cowboy team to actually advance further in the playoffs. Let's face it, Melton is hurt. They don't have a pass rush, right? If Seattle wins, even if the Cowboys beat Green Bay, they wouldn't play another game at home, right? Can they beat Green Bay? in Green Bay. I know the Cowboys are 8-0 on the road. Just remember Green Bay is 8-0 at home. Let me know your thoughts. Also, compare and contrast the statistics between Green Bay's game against these same Lions, right, the last game of the season, and the Cowboy game against these Lions in the playoffs. I kept hearing about the Cowboy offensive line before this game, right? Wasn't Tony Romo under pressure? Is this Cowboy line really that good? What was up with DeMarco Murray early in the game? How come it took him so long to get off? Let me hear from you. If you feel I'm biased against the Cowboys, say that too. If you feel there are other plays in the game that we should keep an eye on, let's hear about those plays as well. Notice, too, I've stayed away from the issue of Des Bryant coming on the field without his helmet, right? You know what? I'll just say this. That entire sequence is curious, isn't it? Right? It seems to me that the discretion seemed to come down completely on the side of the Cowboys. I'm not accusing anyone of corruption. What I am saying, though, is that there didn't seem to be the normal bias. It's outrageous for umpires and referees to pick up a flag, to do so without an explanation on that play at that point in that game is simply outrageous and then to blow the biggest call on the Cowboys subsequent drive a fourth down call when you would expect the crew to be even more vigilant the Jason Witten play is simply inexcusable right I'm sure the Lions understand that if they got better officiating they may well have won that game. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.